Ladies and gentlemen, I am Hans Graf, the principal conductor of the Singapore Symphony. In my first season, which is, as you all know, a little bit a special season, far from audience, but making music, which is very nice that we can do. And I want to talk a little bit about today's program, which is, um, consists of pieces rather rarely played. We'll start with the Mozart Violin Concerto Number no. 1 in B flat major, K207, which was his first concerto on his own, even earlier than the piano concerti. Mozart got very famous through his piano concerti, and he was a really worldwide, the world of then, known, brilliant pianist. And people tended to forget that he was in his youth, the concertmaster of an orchestra at the age of 15, and uh, had written five, piano, uh, five, uh, five violin concerti for himself at the age of 19 already. And his father said sometimes, if he would be a little bit more diligent and practice more, he could be the best violin player of Europe. And it's very interesting because very rarely uh, first class composers were violinists. If you think Brahms was a pianist, Beethoven was a pianist, Tchaikovsky, all of these were piano composers. And Mozart was born with the violin in his hand. So he was 17 when he wrote this concerto for his own use as concertmaster of the Salzburg Orchestra. The style is slightly more serious and more less entertaining in, in, a, in a superficial way than of the serenades, but all the skills he had gained in the serenades are in here. And it's a, yeah, it's a very, very good work which deserves to be much more of performances. It's a pleasure to work on the scope of our programs, to bring new pieces, old new pieces. In a way that's not very different from Schubert, who, if you think of the chronology of his life, was about the same age as Mozart when he wrote his fifth symphony. Mozart grew up in a family which had music like other families have water and bread. And uh, he was probably born with music in his cradle. Schubert grew up in a boarding school, not very lovingly brought up, with a father who couldn't care less about his music. He was one of more than a dozen of children and the father was not really inclined to favor or support his passion for music. So it's incredible to hear that this boy, who had probably never seen a concert played by professional music musicians in town, was at his symphony number no. five with an experience and an ear for the orchestra, which is unparalleled. He probably heard it scratched by a boys orchestra or a school orchestra and it's a tragic uh, side of his biography or let's say of his post-mortem biography that many of his symphonies were performed when he was long dead like symphony number no. three he died in 1827 and in 41 the symphony three was the first time performed completely by a professional orchestra similar with the fifth symphony so it's astonishing that he had such a liberty in treating the orchestration, in treating this form of symphony, such a maturity. And if you say Mozart was this early, early genius, never forget that Schubert was the same. And his life was, alas, even shorter. The symphony seems to be based on a probably one time hearing of Mozart's symphony in G minor, number 40. It shares many things. It shares some thematic hints. It shares, most of all, the instrumentation of the original Mozart uh, G minor without clarinets. 
and the tonalities and some some formulas hidden but musicologists find that it has parts of the Mozart DNA. Number five is like most friendly sociable Schubert you can imagine and it has a sp the first movement is Mozart in, in spirit light and, and light. The second movement is much more Schubert than Mozart because the singing of the of the E flat major is like a Schubert song. It's always good to remember that there is so much great music out there which we, I include myself, do neglect undeservedly. And I want to say something about the other work on this program, which opens the program, which is the Symphony No. 8 by Paul von Kleinau. So, first of all, I suppose that you don't know who was Paul von Kleinau. Paul von Kleinau was born in Denmark from a German family, but he was Danish, growing up speaking Danish. He moved to Vienna to study, like many people from the North did, and he studied with shillings and not to, not to forget with Arnold Schoenberg. So he was in the middle of the forces of new music who started to break down the walls of old music. He was a very earnest composer and also he was forced to be cautious because he was, uh, he, his daughter was married to a Jewish, very famous Jewish writer and his wife was, I think, part Jewish. So what is number eight? Number eight is written during the war. And like other symphonies of Mr. Shostakovich, for instance, who wrote a, dis a disappointing number nine, disappointing for Stalin, who wanted to pick number nine for the Soviet triumph, he wrote number nine like a Haydn symphony. Planer wrote in his inner immigration a classical symphony in D major, a little bit like Prokofiev, but Prokofiev from a completely other situation. And his, in his isolation, and he finished his score, but he was sure that it not, would not be played during his lifetime, because nothing was played during his lifetime anymore. So the symphony is a little bit in, a, in, a, in, a, in the raw, in an unedited way. And we are playing from the first edition of this piece in history. So we had to do the, the, the work those good women are doing when a baby is born. You have to look at it, wash it, see it, wrap it, and what we call that with the symphony had to do the editing. And now we present the result. It's very interesting to hear this. It's a friendly, uh, like, uh, let's say, innocent symphony for his own pleasure and for the pleasure of many, we hope. And it should be the start of a project to point our uh, interest a little bit more towards Mr. von Kleinau, who is an unrightfully forgotten composer, like many others, to, to be really unearthed and discovered for our daily use, because we do too much of the same. So this is a, a, a try to propose something new to you, which is in fact very old. It's on, not only old uh, in, in birth date, but old in style. That's what he said, the symphony in the olden style. And I hope you enjoy it.